Hello, everybody. We have a great show lined up for you today on some great tools. Uh, I have uh, Aaron Martinez with us. My name is Russ Festino. I'm the host this week. Uh, it's filling in for Ryan Fox. And it's my pleasure to um, have Aaron join us on building a Web3 uh, on Algorand JavaScript edition. Uh, Aaron's the founder and lead developer for Headline, uh, as well as uh, really uh, probably one of the top contributors in the Algorand ecosystem with, uh, I think you said it, it over like 80 repos or something like that, Aaron. And uh, we had uh, quite a week last week, huh? In, uh, in uh, Austin, Texas. We did. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, me, you and uh, JP from Reach, um, mm -hmm. we definitely you know brought the show uh, to Austin and we presented something for blockchains that not a lot of people get to see. Um, basically, what you can do with kind of explaining the ecosystem and then what JP was able to do with like really like, you know, emphasizing how awesome reach uh, smart contract construction is. And then yeah. kind of like me to explain how all of that can be integrated into really like seamless front end applications. We presented a full suite of development um, that was really, really, really got the a uh, whole place excited about developing on Algorand. Yeah, it was really a whole beginning to end type solution. And I mean, that's the comments that we got afterwards. It's like, holy smokes, man, you guys really got a great stack, you know, development stack. So yeah, that was a pretty cool experience. And uh, thanks so much for sponsoring the dinner that one night. That was really awesome as well. You guys, you're awesome. And uh, so be that as it may, we have some great content. So I think we'll go ahead and get started, let you take the stage. And uh, I'm going to scoot off to the side while you present. And we also have Ben uh, online here today that's going to help out with some of the Q&A. And uh, Brian, if you can just pipe up in the chat window uh, if there's anything uh, and that you need to say as well. We will have this deck available at the end. We have a link for it. So uh, take it away, Aaron. Thanks. Excellent. All right. So my name is Aaron Martinez. I'm the founder of Headline. And today we're going to be looking at Web3 construction on Algorand. And we're looking at that specifically from a JavaScript perspective. So what is Pipeline UI? And why exactly were we building this? So Pipeline UI is a vanilla JavaScript SDK and a React component library built specifically for the Algorand blockchain. Now, when we were approaching this project, um, we discovered a really interesting thing in the blockchain space. There are essentially 100,000 developers that are working across the entire blockchain industry on all of the different chains globally. But there's about 20 million developers worldwide. So what is the real question is, what is the most effective way to onboard and on-ramp new developers into the blockchain space? What we believe we've created is a really seamless integrated way to make that transition as easy as possible. As we go through these slides, we're going to kind of demonstrate both on the back end and the front end. Um, we're going to be looking at fully functioning decentralized applications. We're going to be looking at the SDK that powers them and what we can do with smart contract construction as well. So on the agenda for today, we have the Pipeline SDK, which we're going to talk about first. Then we're going to look specifically at the Pipeline UI React components and component library. And then we're going to run through some of the different Web3 demos and repos that we have available for developers working on Algorand. So what is the Pipeline SDK? Pipeline is a class of JavaScript wrapping functions that combines Algo SDK transaction assembly, transaction signing with all three major wallets, Algo Signer, MyAlgo, and Wallet Connect. And we can actually add more wallets as they become available. There's a chance that within the next year, we could have two to three additional major wallets, and we can integrate all of those directly into our SDK. Um, it also, it's also for sending transactions to the Algo network and returning relevant confirmations, transaction ID, asset ID, or app ID. And this is a good example of something that we created that we use in absolutely everything. Whatever we're building on Algorand for our own uh, company's applications or for demos that we built for the community, this is integrated into everything because it makes it so much easier to interact with the blockchain. So configuring the node and indexer servers, creating, signing, and sending transactions can require dozens to hundreds of lines of code. What we're looking at here is a pipeline SDK example, which is four lines of code that in the Algo SDK by itself could be over 100 lines of code. But by combining them and being able to compress them in a way it makes it so much easier for developers, especially once they're just getting started, to be able to interact with the SDK. 
Note that the argument hello on the previous slide corresponds to the transaction note field, which must be a uint 8 array. Pipeline further reduces coding by automatically detecting and encoding note strings in app call arg arrays. So there's an interesting transition that we're doing right now to integrate vanilla JavaScript into the SDK because Pipeline was originally created by Headline to simplify the creation of React algorithm components. As time went by, we discovered a greater need for vanilla JavaScript users who may not be familiar with Node.js. So as of right now, Pipeline can be embedded directly on the front end of a website like WordPress through a simple script tag. Here's an example of how you could easily embed the SDK directly on a website like WordPress or something like else like that in a really, really seamless, intuitive way. What all can you do with the pipeline SDK? Well, here's some of the functionalities that you can do right now. So you can send algos or ASAs. You can check algo balance. You can mint ASAs. You can compile and deploy teal apps. You can delete teal apps. You can opt into teal apps. You can make app calls. You can make app calls with a transaction. You can read app global state. In the near future, we'll be adding the ability to do group transactions. And over time, we plan to integrate the entire Algo SDK and to basically look at every single different type of array that you would be doing with it and to be able to compress it into as small a package as possible, thus allowing as easy of use as possible with the largest amount of different um, applications that you'd be able to do with it. The next thing we're going to look at is our algorand specific React components. And this is a really innovative thing um, that we settled upon when we were first approaching the question of how to build a component library for algorand. Essentially, what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a standardized React component library, but we wanted, we wanted to hard code specific functionality for the algorand blockchain into each component that we were building. And by hard coding it in, it allowed direct interaction with the algorithm blockchain with a simple line of code with different arguments that you could put directly inside of it. And now we're going to quickly look at what exactly that looks like in the field. So what you see right here is a component demo. And all of the different demos that we have on this website, they all actually work directly on the website. So you can actually log in with your wallet to see how the different buttons work for each of the different wallets. You can also see an entire array of different application calls that you could do, whether you want to experiment with how to mint a NFT, for example, or if you're trying to see how to deploy an application or an app call, these things work directly on the website. And we actually have made it a point to make as many of the components as possible work directly on the website. And here's a little bit more of a breakdown of what you just saw there with the that essentially array of different um, actions that you can do. That's something that we've added recently. And you can also see things like the QR code or how to use Wallet Connect. All of those different things we have clear examples for. And almost all of them actually work directly on the website. Now, here's where it gets interesting, too, with our React component library. So this is an example of how, how the Pipeline SDK is interacting with our React component library. So first we saw how it reacts generally. And now this is for the React-specific interaction. So you see the complete code for switching to Algo Signer and Testnet, connecting wallet and sending a group transaction consisting of app call with arg send to self, and transaction sending 1,000 micro algos to self in eight lines of code. And here's a full breakdown of what one of those components looks like once we actually like peek inside. This is a React code equivalent to vanilla JavaScript from the previous slides. Essentially, what you have is two JS ta JSX tags, which create a button. And when click transactions are assembled, users are prompted to sign in. Transaction is sent to the blockchain. And address and transaction ID are returned to the state object. And when we were choosing the different kinds of things we want to integrate into each component, we really try to approach it from what would be the easiest thing if we were a developer building any kind of application, what kind of things would they want to see in these components that would support the broadest range of use cases? 
And you can experiment with them directly on our website, and then you can install the libraries with NPM, or you can fork our repos on GitHub. And it's really exciting, all the different stuff that you'll be able to build with the different components in the SDK that we've put together. We've done a lot more than just uh, like the primitive stuff, though. Here's something really exciting that we've been working on lately, which is actually integrating Reach directly into our React components. Uh, and this is really interesting. So basically, Reach is a really, really cool language that allows for a really, really seamless process of compiling your smart contracts. And it actually does a lot of the auditing and logic checking directly in the compiling process. Now, this is something that's typically meant to work in on the back end, essentially. But when we were approaching this, we were looking for innovative ways that you could actually get that process to be visualized directly on the front end of a website, thus allowing developers to kind of be able to understand the logic within Reach and to be able to actually visualize these things as they're running initially. And so we're going to go through a couple different examples here. The first one we're going to look at is the Reach Mora game that works on DevNet. And this works directly in Gitpod. So Gitpod's a really cool thing that's integrated with GitHub where you can just click a single button and you'll be able to pull it up in a virtual machine. You have to change a couple of things, but we have the um, all the instructions directly on our um, GitHub repository for this. But within five minutes, you can deploy a Reach DevNet server. You can launch this game, which essentially allows two AIs to play a game of a wager game of fingers against each other. And you can actually see it played out in real time with these AI generated um, examples, which allow you as a developer to see the logic within these reach smart contracts in real time. Our philosophy is that the easiest way to teach somebody how something works is to show them that thing working and then let them unpack it and deconstruct it for whatever their use case is. And here's what you can do directly on our website. And this is another really innovative thing we did, where now you don't even have to open a virtual machine in order to interact with these Reach smart contracts. So on our Reach Contracts Lab page, you actually have a variety of different Reach smart contracts that you can deploy on Testnet directly within your browser without having to open any kind of a virtual machine. And this is actually going to support the Reach game that we saw on the previous slide that we opened in Gitpod. We also have several other games that are really interesting, with different sorts of things you can do. One of them is an Oracle example, where you can actually see data um, changing state as the application is running. Um, there's some really exciting stuff. And we actually want to expand this considerably over time to support the broadest range of Reach smart contracts possible. And by doing this, we can actually make the process a lot smoother for people that, let's say, for example, they're new to Algorand, they're familiar with the, the dev sites, they want to start building something, and they're trying to see if they want to work with Reach or work directly with Teal. Well, if you come to our website, you can actually interact with both the Teal smart contracts and the Reach smart contracts, learn about the logic, learn about the pros and cons of both, and then you'll be able to make a really informed decision. And you'll be able to run these things directly within your own browser. Here's an example of what we've done with our Teal lab. And basically what this allows you to do is it allows you to actually deploy a permissioned or permissionless voting smart contract. It allows you to actually be able to interact with that voting smart contract. And then we actually have a piece of it that actually allows you to visualize the analytics that's returned from that voting smart contract. This is another ambitious thing that we did because we wanted to make it as easy as possible for developers to start interacting with the voting is a really interesting thing with, with uh, you know, what you can do on Algorand, whether you're building a DAO or some other, or you want to just integrate a governance aspect into your DAP. Well, with what we've built, you can actually do that all within one application in a really seamless way. And this is something that is a work in progress that's really, really exciting. That is also something that works directly on the front end of our website. So this is called Stack Trace. It's a work in progress. But essentially, Stack Trace is a simple tool to aid in debugging Teal 
by parsing till opcodes, visualizing the stack and storage after the execution of each opcode, and logging the global local states on completion of the till program. The initial focus of stack trace is to support basic mathematical and storage functions, which can be particularly challenging to mentally track during the authoring of teal code. And what you can do is if you're working with teal um, in your own private environment, you can paste that teal directly into this application and it'll visualize the stack for you. This is a work in progress. We wanted to eventually be able to um, you know, fully encompass everything you can do. Uh, we're at about 75, 80% right now. You can already do quite a lot. It's actually really, really exciting. This is another one of our most recent applications. That's just a really good demonstration of just how composable all of these different things are that we're building. Essentially, what you have here is called AlgoChat. And it's a good, really good demonstration of Teal 5 and what you could do with um, inner transactions and apps now. And it's also an interesting example of, of you know, what you can do with oracles and also how different apps can interact with each other. So we've essentially created a front end that allows you to deploy a chatting app. And then when you add or opt into your friends chatting apps, you can then have a on-chain, completely permissionless um, messaging application that you can do with your friends. But there's some really practical use cases to this as well. Like let's say for example, you have a decentralized application and you wanna have um, essentially a call, you wanna have a help desk. You can have a help desk now directly within your decentralized application with AlgoChat. Simply by adding this feature to a decentralized application, you can now have completely decentralized help essentially by allowing people to ask questions if they're having issues with connecting to it or anything else. And this is all um, available for any of you guys to start building with today. Here's a full list of the different pipeline demos that we have directly on the Pipeline UI site. And we really want this to cover the range of possible use cases um, that you could have if you're working um, with the Iron blockchain. We plan to extensively expand this over time. We have pretty ambitious goals for the Pipeline UI project, and we want it to be one of the biggest, um, essentially, repositories for, for like functional demos within the Web3 space. And we want to make sure that those demos actually do cover essentially every different type of industry that could be interacting with the blockchain, as many use cases as possible, right? Because going back to what we originally said is the, essentially the purpose of this is to make the developer onboarding experience, the on-ramp dilemma. We want to be able to solve that by making it as easy as possible to get off the ground running. And here are some of the different repos that we have on GitHub that are available uh, to be experimented with or forked. And all of this is complete open source and, and contributed by us to the Algorand community. Um, and then these are uh, cover an even larger range than the demos that we have directly on the Pipeline UI site. And this is something that we'll also be expanding greatly over time um, to make essentially the largest um, essentially repos of open source code within the Algorand blockchain and hopefully, you know, across multiple blockchains in this industry as an example for how to kind of integrate all of the front end stuff um, with all the really exciting stuff that's happening with smart contract construction. So in summary, today we looked at the Pipeline SDK. We looked at the Pipeline UI React components and how those React components can also integrate with the Pipeline SDK. We looked at some of the different Web3 demos and repos that we've put together already. And you can also find us on the Algorand Discord server. And here's a link to that server. And if you're building anything with Pipeline UI or the Pipeline SDK, uh, we try to make ourselves available to help to help you guys whenever possible. Um, we think that community outreach is a huge part of what we're doing. So we try to also participate as mentors in different hackathons and generally to make ourselves available to the community if you all have questions or if you need assistance with um, using any of these different applications or um, essentially things that we're building. And I'm, I always try to make myself personally available as well. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to shoot me an email and I would love to help you out with whatever your um, Web3 need is in the Algorand space.
And we did have one question. Um, they know that Pipeline's multi-wallet connect component can, you know, log in with my algo, algo signer, and wallet connect. But after they're logged in, can they then they use reach transaction signings? Mainly for algo signer, you know, transaction signings can be, you know, they're, oh they're yeah, signed. absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have a repo on our GitHub called um, Pipeline Reach Scaffold. And it's a okay. demonstration of using Algo Signer um, with Reach. So if you find oh, our great. Reach, yeah, if you find the Reach scaffold repo on our uh, GitHub, there's a Algo Signer demonstration in there. I think okay, the one that go. we have in our, I think the one that we have in our um, demo on the website is going to yeah. be for specifically for my Algo though. Yeah, and actually, Reach does support um, Wallet Connect. It, it was recently added in, and I think there is just one um, uh, uh, PR that's got to be applied and uh, pulled in, and it should work just fine uh, with uh, with that as well. So that was a new um, feature that they recently announced too that I'm aware of. All right, cool. Can you uh, do you want to show a couple of quick demos, live demos Absolutely. from your your, your, sure. your site? Why don't you go take the screen back and and Absolutely. show a few more? All right. Cool. I know you had some really great ones you showed uh, at the El Ranch uh, last Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. one of the, one of the ones we'll look at real quick is called Pipeline Express. So this is a really really cool demo that we built because we wanted to basically make it so. And here's a cool um, example that we like to use. Let's say, for example, that um, you have no coding experience. You work at a bank, for example, and you're trying to get the people on your board to um, start, you know, integrating blockchain technology directly within, um, you know, your banking system or something like that, right? You have a presentation to do. You've never worked with blockchain technology before. Um, you don't have any kind of visual that you're planning to show, but you find this website and you're like, wait a second, this is a demo that I can build with no coding experience. Essentially, all you have to do is you can fork this repo, change the branding for it, and now you have a simple example for how a whatever kind of you know business you work for can easily start interacting with the algorithm blockchain. It's just a really simple way to basically be able to provide a just a simple demo for just how seamless the, the process could be for you know sending and signing transactions, different things like that. This is also one of the leanest um, DApps that you could possibly see. Um, it's an extraordinarily small amount of code that's put into this and it's one of the easiest things is basically like a shell or a boilerplate to build a decentralized application on top of uh, so we like to always use this as an example for devs to um, use to kind of get their feet wet we have a really cool video on our youtube channel of two of our interns that had absolutely no coding experience that were able to essentially fork and deploy the Pipeline Express application and even change some of the different features of it in under five minutes. And it was fully functional on mainnet with no coding experience. Because that's kind of like what we're trying to do with Pipeline UI. We're trying to make it that simple in order to do things. What we have here is called AlgoGlyph. This is another interesting thing that we built recently. And what this allows you to do is it actually allows you to do on-chain data storage. And that has some really interesting use cases. So one of the main use cases for it is for signing NFTs. And this is something that's already been integrated by the AlgoGems NFT marketplace. So if you're using their marketplace, you now have the ability to actually sign the NFT and that data is encrypted and stored directly within the minting transaction. And beyond just NFTs, this has a lot of practical use cases for um, people in a variety of different industries. We had several people reach out right after we released this and we're like, this is awesome. Because every time I do a major transaction on Algorand, I get a call from my bank asking for a signature. But because it's digital transaction, there are no signatures, at least not a physical signature. With AlgoGlyph, you can actually create a physical signature to go along with your transaction. Let's see here. And here's just an example of the Pipeline Connect feature that we were looking at as far as how exactly the different React components are going to be interacting with the Pipeline SDK. And it shows you basic, the basic functionality of what that looks like as well. And here we can look down here. So this is the Reach boilerplate that we were talking about a few minutes ago. And if you come down here, it essentially allows you to 
connect to your test net where you're going to be doing the demo. And then it allows you to choose the different contract you want to do. For this one, we're going to use Dan Storage. Dan Storage is the application um, for the on chain data storage. And you can see here how it creates a log. And then you actually can see exactly what is going to be getting um, ran or deployed directly on the front end. So you have your initial teal code and then you have your front end code. And then when you click deploy, it'll actually be able to run it directly within the browser. And you'll be able to actually see it as it plays out. I'm not going to be able to deploy it right now because you need it. You need to have a algorithm address that has less than 10 applications on it. That's a very important thing. So if you have more than 10 applications on an algorithm address, then you won't be able to deploy any more applications. But that's an example of an Oracle right there. And then we also have the Mora game, the one that works with directly within the browser. That one you actually need a friend to play with. So, or you can open two different browser windows and connect separately because you need to have both a creator of the contract and you need to have the other participant in that as well. And then we can also look down here at the Teal Pipeline Vote demo. And what this allows you to do is that it actually allows you to deploy different voting contracts directly on chain. And then you would be able to see exactly how those are interacting as well. And we have the GitHub sources for these as well. And you can fork those if you'd like. And then you can actually integrate these directly within your Web3 applications. And we have all the front end code and how that works directly here too, as well as the teal code that's going to be getting deployed. Right? So by putting by compacting all of this and putting it in as, as easily a consumable package as possible, we think that this is going to go miles to onboarding and on-ramping new developers. And all of this stuff works great on mobile as well. We always try to make sure that uh, mobile compatibility is key. So if you want to uh, you know, start playing around with this and you're on a flight or if you're you know, um, you know, on transportation somewhere, you only have your phone, you can you can deploy a reach smart contract on your phone now, right? So that's kind of like, you know, just some of the cool stuff that you'd be able to do um, directly on our website. And then the other thing we can look at here is all of the different um, algorand specific components and how you can actually interact with them directly on the website. So as you can see here, you can actually like sign in with the buttons and then if you're going to be deleting an application you can delete the applications you can fetch transactions you could see exactly how the minting of nfts would work and then you can see all of the different buttons and functionalities as well we also have things like multi-wallet connect where it's a simple drop down with all three different um, wallets that are already going to be integrated and then you have these awesome features right here, which are basically the demos for the different analytics that you can embed directly within your applications. And then you can see both the functionality of them, and then you can see different ways you can interact with them. With these ones right here, we have them natively built to basically pull certain data from the Algo Explorer indexer. And you can see basically we have a rich list here, and then we have transaction count, and we have unit volume over time. But these are very, very customizable and work um, with a very large number of different applications, depending on how you're, you're going to be using them. And these are just some of the different examples of all of the different things that you can build. We also have different videos uh, directly on our website for exactly how you would um, be working with some of these different contracts. We have both demonstrations of uh, you know, the pipeline reach, for example, and then we actually have that video of some of our interns that were actually like learning how to uh, build and deploy these applications with no coding experience at all. Um, and there's so much to see on this website and we're gonna continue to build it so much over time. But that's just a brief overview of some of the different demos that are gonna be available to you or to other developers um, as they start to learn and um, work with the Algorand blockchain in the Algorand ecosystem. Yeah, that's awesome, man. You know, I, I, I'm a big believer of controls uh, myself. You know, um, that adage that uh, once you have a great idea, some, a great ideas seem to resurface themselves in slightly different 
formats, you know, this is exactly it. I remember, you know, when Visual Basic first came out, you know, what made Visual Basic was the fact that you had all these components, right? There was a component market, a third party control market that you can add right into Visual Studio, drag and drop a grid on a page or, or something like that. And you just had to set properties. So that really made the development so much quicker and so much better. And then, uh, you know, I worked for Microsoft for about a dozen years. So big, big believer in, in uh, a lot of these third-party controls um, like Sync Fusion and Component One and, you know, uh, the list goes on. But this is unbelievable where you've got it tied right into Algorand functionality in building these solutions. And this should save tons of time for developers, not to mention the code that you have to debug and go through and make sure it's all working because you've got... Um, a lot of code savings with your controls as you demonstrated that one that had only like four lines that you know would equate to dozens if not a, you know over a hundred lines of code in, in a uh you know a raw application that you might be writing with the Elgrand sdks so very cool stuff man i really love it it's really great good job aaron thank you yeah absolutely and just some you know like actual testament from developers uh, the developer of algocharts.net specifically he integrated some of our different tools on his website he said that some of the things we've built saved him hundreds of hours of coding specifically um and then some of the things we've built specifically when it comes to uh voting for you know dow governance and everything like that we've made it possible for people to you know make their dow like visions of reality when nothing else was currently available for if you want to basically embed the voting applications directly within your your web app or anything like that so we're providing the tools and the necessary primitives for um you know anybody and not just you know experienced developers but really anybody to be able to kind of embrace web3 and to really you know no matter how crazy your dream is if it can be built we will build it or we will demonstrate exactly what you would need to be able to do to build it well, that's great. And we're all looking forward to the, uh, all the, like the, the teal debugger, uh, that you got, uh, roughly about 90% complete, I guess you were telling me the other day. And, um, we're looking forward to some content that maybe you can write up for us on our develop portal, uh, regarding, you know, a lot of this stuff. And maybe you could talk to about the effort that you got going on with some of these tools and the, the debugging stuff. Definitely. Right. So, so stack trace specifically, is something that we're building um, after Stacy, the new head of the Algram Foundation. Um, you know, she mentioned that there needs to be a lot bigger drive for developer tooling, specifically related to compiling and debugging. So, what Stack Trace is essentially is it allows you to, you know, visualize the stack as you're doing your teal contract construction, and it works directly within the browser, right? And that's really important because, um, you know, instead of having to, you know, install different libraries or different things like that, if you're working somewhere and you want to be able to quickly uh, be able to visualize the stack, you can just hop on over to the Pipeline UI website and you can paste your, um, essentially, you know, the till you're working on directly within that application. And in about two seconds, it'll be able to visualize the stack for you. Um, we're, yeah, we've got a bit of ways to go on it still, but, it works very well so far, and our developers, you know, absolutely swear by it already. Um, they're saying it's already saving them a ton of time, especially as the more smart, the more complicated the smart contracts get that you're trying to build, the more important it is to have something like this um, that can help you like visualize the stack. All right, man, cool. All right, well, uh, I think um, then we're about set today. Is there anything else you want to close with, Aaron, before we uh, we hang up here? Definitely, yeah. And I would just like to close by saying that, you know, what we're seeing right now with Pipeline UI and with the Pipeline SDK is very much an early stage example of how ambitious we want this project to be. We want this to be kind of an example within the blockchain space of how to, as seamlessly as possible, integrate um, front end tooling with the primitives on the blockchain for smart contract construction. So we're going to be massively expanding both the number of demos we have, the number of repos related to it, and um, just the amount of documentation on the site so that anybody with any use case can come to Algorand and we'll be able to get off the ground running and start building whatever web app, web three application it is that you're working on. All right, man. Well done. And thank you very <laughs> much, Aaron, for a great show. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you.